back to another episode of the Conversation Series produced by the British Council of Vietnam. I hope you're all doing well. Last week we had the pleasure to meet some Vietnamese experts and have a chat about research and mobility. Today's episode is just as exciting and I, I can't wait to jump right into the discussion. It's about resilience, resilience across different sectors, which is such a pertinent theme to all of us at this moment in time. And today we have the opportunity to meet a few experts from different fields. So I'd like to introduce you to our guest speakers. Our first speaker is Associate Professor Chan Thi Thue Thang from Hanoi University of Public Health. Coming up after that will be Professor Nguyen Chung Viet, Vice President of Thuy Loi University. And then Professor Zung Fang Chung from Queen's University in Belfast. It's such a pleasure to welcome you on to this week's conversation. So resilience can be defined as the ability to survive and thrive in a crisis whether due to conflict, climate, and now COVID-19. There's clear evidence that human actions, principally the burning of fossil fuels and associated release of climate pollutants are causing significant changes to the global climate system. And as many aspects of health are strongly influenced by weather and climate conditions, this inevitably presents risks for human health. And looking at Vietnam right now, we can see two big problems that the country is dealing with. COVID-19 and the recent massive floods in central Vietnam. So strengthening health resilience and climate change are national priorities. And the UK-Vietnam collaboration uh, contributes to helping prepare Vietnam's health sector with uh, a resilient and improved ability in responding to some climate sensitive infectious diseases. Uh, so let's take a look at each, each issue and um, hear the view from our experts on this subject. Okay, so first of all, um, uh, I'd like to ask Professor Chanti Tuet Hang. Professor Hang, it seems that um, public health resilience in the education sector might be a new term for some of our audiences. Can you tell us a bit more about what it means? How does, how does a public health approach improve young people's resilience and help them make positive health decisions, health choices? Uh, hi, my name is Hai Chen. Uh, I'm environmental health lecturer at Hanoi University of Public Health. The term the resilient uh, is, has been currently used in many different uh, fields and sectors. But uh, in the health and public health uh, field can be understood as the resources, all the resources, including the assets, uh, the skills, the knowledge, um, the plans and the governance that the public health sector um, has and uh, able to mobilize and use uh, in order to um, respond to a bit different um, uh, ha climate change hazards, especially the increasing the, uh, frequencies and tensions of the disaster and uh, extreme weather events. So th this is a very important uh, because Vietnam uh, uh, is among the, um, the six countries in the world uh, being the most vulnerable uh, to climate change and extreme weather events. So increasing the public health resilience is very important, especially for the young people. So in the training and academic, uh, like Hanoi University of Public Health, we uh, focus on increasing the students with knowledge and skill uh, so after graduation they can be more resilient not only for themselves and increase the resilience for the health sector but also to build the resilience for the community in order to uh, get prepared and response and recovery um, for uh, and be ready for the disasters and extreme weather events. So um, to do to re to minimize and mitigate the impacts, but also to revital after the disasters. So why did Hanoi University of Public Health partner with the UK in building health resilience? What what knowledge and practices um, have, has has your institution gained? And, and what are the most notable and valuable achievements of the project for both UK and Vietnamese partners? So the uh, climate change and uh, disaster increased the risk of uh, different uh, direct and indirect health impacts. For example, direct impact you can see injuries and 
uh, health impacts uh, during the heat waves, but also, also prolonged impact like uh, waterborne diseases, vector-borne diseases, and even mental health impacts. So to understand this, it's very important that to build the knowledge and skills in analyzing data, long-term data in the past two, three decades, and also to build the model for prediction so that the health sector can increase the capacities in the planning uh, in responding to this uh, important uh, health challenge that we are facing. Uh, so the, the, to be uh, implementing this, uh, we know that um, uh, our partner in UK, is the Queen uh, University's Belfast, is the, they have very good uh, skills and experiences in the applying the artificial intelligence and also data um, analytic skills and um, the, uh, big uh, like big data. So uh, they also they have experiences in implementing several uh, projects in the climate change and um, uh, disasters in Vietnam. Uh, therefore, to, uh, we partnered with them uh, so to extend our network in Vietnam and also in the UK. Uh, so to to learn from them and to apply the things that we didn't know about them. Uh, artificial intelligence and big data and uh, very advanced um, uh, methods in data analysis in understanding the risk, the health risk related to uh, climate change and uh, climate variability. We can see that COVID-19 has tested the resilience of health systems and societies across the globe at a time of technological optimism and, and, and promise. So how has the application of AI and digitalization of, of healthcare helped public health resilience? Mm. Uh, because it's the first year uh, we implement this project and just learned uh, from new uh, models from our partner. So uh, we um, firstly, we explore the data of several climate sensitive diseases because of the, the project is focusing on climate change. So we focus on dengue fever, um, diarrhea and um, uh, influenza that we have, we had data in the past two decades and we linked those data with uh, climate data to build the prediction models for uh, COVID-19. Our schools have been implementing several research projects to understanding about the risk and also for risk communication, but uh, haven't uh, got the model for the, the COVID-19 predictions because it's new to diseases. But I know that uh, recently we, um, myself and uh, my colleagues, published a paper that uh, analyzing the response of Vietnam uh, governments and the health sector and related partners in the first six months of the pandemic. And uh, in the paper, we describe the important role of the application of uh, digitalization and also the information technology. You can see that in the past months, uh, information technology plays a very important role in the increasing the resilience and response of the health sector in the responding to COVID-19. For example, different uh, apps have been applied and then uh, on the mobile phone and then also you, the ringtone, you see that every day the um, Ministry of Health uh, send the message, text message to every mobile users in Vietnam that to practice different uh, measures to prevent the disease and also the application for uh, tourists and um, travelers to declare their uh, health status, for example. So you see that it's very important. And also in our university and other universities and school, the applications of uh, uh, information technology is very important in our teaching. Like for months, the, we, have been, we have been teaching online through Zoom and Microsoft team. So without information technologies, we couldn't be like couldn't continue our teachings and research activities. And even the partnering with our partner in UK, all the, all uh, activities have been done online. So I think uh, it's very important role of AI and information technologies in responding to different cha challenges. It's not only the COVID nineteen. That's so interesting. Thanks, thanks so much, Professor Hang. And now let's hear from another expert from a from a, a different, if related, field. Professor
Professor Nguyen Chung Kiet. So building disaster resilience is one of the national priorities because nobody or no country is immune from disaster, disaster related losses. The 2020 floods in central Vietnam have shown that we still have a weak system of disaster resilience. So how has the UK Vietnam partnership helped your university come up with new ideas and practices to enhance disaster resilience in Vietnam? Dưới sự tài trợ của Hội đồng Anh thì trường đại học thủy lợi đã rất là tích cực tham gia với đại học Queen Stafford của Anh giải quyết những vấn đề về thảm họa thế nhũng thiên tai ven biển và chúng tôi đã giải quyết những vấn đề rất là rất là thời sự đặc biệt những vấn đề về về hạn hán về xâm nhập mặn ở khu vực miền Trung Tây Nguyên đặc biệt là những cái khu vực ngập lụt và những sạt lở đất trong khu vực miền Trung trong thời gian vừa qua ta biết là chúng ta biết là trong cái gì từ cơn bão số 5, số 6, số 7, số 8, số 9 đến 13 vừa rồi thì thủy điện rào trăng 3 cũng như là cái đồn sáu số 7 ở khu vực Quảng Nam miền Trung rồi chúng ta đã thấy những cái thảm họa những tai họa rất là khốc liệt thì trường đại học thủy lợi đã tham gia tích cực với các chuyên gia ở trong nước cũng quốc tế đặc biệt ngay ngày chiều hôm qua chúng tôi đã phối hợp với đại học Queen's Belfast và với giáo sư Dương Trung của đại học Queen's Belfast một trong những chuyên gia hàng đầu về lĩnh vực về điện điện tử và viễn thông trong giải quyết vấn đề về thảm họa trong những cái tài trợ của cơ quan như vậy chúng tôi thấy rằng là chúng tôi rất là tích cực để giải quyết những vấn đề về thí dụ như thiên tai ven biển. And importantly, what's the role of big data in explaining or anticipating or even reducing disaster losses? Một những cái điều rất quan trọng là giải quyết những vấn đề thiên tai thì dựa vào những dữ liệu lớn. Thế thì trước đây khi mà chúng tôi chưa đủ số liệu một cách đầy đủ thì chúng tôi có những cách tiếp cận truyền thống. Tuy nhiên trong thời đại công nghệ 4.0 chúng tôi đã có những số liệu rất quan trọng. Chúng tôi đã có tiếp cận như là học máy, trí điện nhân tạo, cách tiếp cận dữ liệu lớn mà thực tế hiện nay những công nghệ mà Việt Nam chưa có thể có điều kiện để tiếp, tiếp cận được chúng ta những điều rất là quan trọng có thể là hỗ trợ giải quyết và giúp những cộng đồng khoa học Việt Nam giải quyết những vấn đề lớn trong tương lai. Thanks so much for sharing uh, all of this. We can certainly see a very close connection, a close bond to and support from uh, UK higher education to your institution in order to figure out the most appropriate uh, ways forward. Um, and next we have Professor Zung Quang Chung from the same field. So Professor Chung, one way to reduce disasters is obviously to invest in an enhanced resilience. What, what type of disasters is Vietnam facing right now? And how can Vietnam improve its resilience in terms of public health and climate and addressing climate challenges? Uh, as you know, Vietnam is uh, one of the world's a more vulnerable country in terms of the uh, climate change and we are in the top 10 in the world in terms of the climate risk and uh, there are many types of disaster in Vietnam like storm, hurricane, flooding and it happens every year especially in the central of Vietnam and it's a uh, threatened the livelihood of the citizens in Vietnam. Uh, for me I think it requires uh, the um, multidisciplinary research between many uh, scientists and researcher in uh, many fields. Our Fort Newton uh, research uh, project between Queen University and Vietnamese partner university. And over the last uh, six years, we have several research projects and most of them target on the use of uh, advanced ICT technology to cope with the um, natural disaster. And, uh, you know, the, the key problem for, for natural disaster is how to uh, maintain the connectivity to the developing country, for example, Vietnam, where we have most uh, natural disaster happen in the rural area or the isolated area. And we have difficult terrain to approach them. So how to deploy the equipment is the, uh, one of the, uh, the, the challenge for developing country. And to get uh, overcome of these uh, difficulties, our research tried to develop um, some of novel scheme that can uh, help to maintain the net network. 
for example, we, we try to uh, propose uh, the uh, catastrophe tolerant wireless network that can work during the natural disaster. So we can uh, redeploy the network after that. So we don't, we don't uh, implement or we don't use the expensive equipment, but we try to, to uh, innovate the current network infrastructure. Drones have received mixed reviews because of their association with the invasion of privacy and with their armed deployment in, in war. Um, however, there's a more positive use of drones that provides safety, protection and relief from disaster. Can you tell us a bit more about drone application um, in natural risk reduction in Vietnam? What's, how, how would you evaluate um, drone application in Vietnam so far and, and is it costly? We, we try to develop uh, the, uh, the network um, for example, I already mentioned we integrated the network infrastructure currently under the cellular network, sensor network, and TV network, and other network as well. One of the uh, recent technology that we develop at the moment is to use drone, amateur drone, or unmanned aerial vehicle to, uh, you know, when we had the disaster happen, mostly the uh, the network tower center of the mobile service provider is normally they don't have function anymore so we, we need to have something else ready and using drone immediately they can uh, serve at like you can see like flying base station fly on the top of the nature disaster that can connect the victim or the citizen in disaster area they can connect them uh, with the control center so we know exactly where they are or what need they have and then the one need they want to have at the moment medical supply and things like that so using drone is one of our technology at the moment to have this guy of severe scenario. Thanks so much, Professor Chung, for your uh, valuable insights and contributions. So thanks so much to all our speakers. As you know, with the increasing awareness on the part of national and international bodies on the impact of, of climate change, building climate resilience has become a, a major goal. The key focus of efforts on climate and health resilience is to address the vulnerability that communities, states, countries currently have with regards to the many consequences of, cli of climate change. Today, three experts have shed some light on this, and hopefully we all understand a bit more about the importance of strengthening public health resilience to climate change. So thanks again for joining the show today. We'll be back with another episode soon. So stay tuned and bye for now.